Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a totally different kind of video to share with you. I thought it would be fun to do a patio makeover. We usually do a lot of decor DIYs on this channel, but today we are doing a home DIY. And I will be sticking to a very strict budget of $500. So that has to include everything. The paint, furniture, decor, a new rug, and anything else we're going to be needing. I'll be showing you a couple tips and tricks along the way on how to save some money and get the most out of your budget. So here is my patio that we are going to be giving a makeover. It is looking a little bit tired and it definitely needs a refresh. We haven't been spending too much time out here, but the fall is coming up very soon and that is my absolute favorite time of year. I love to sit outside with a cup of coffee and just enjoy that autumn weather. So I figured this was the perfect time to just kind of put the work in and give this patio a much needed refresh. So this is what the setup is right now. We just have these two chairs. We've actually had these for quite some time and they've been wonderful. We've absolutely loved them, but they are a little bit older now and we were just kind of looking to get something a little bit different, but these were super comfortable and I did absolutely love them, but they are going to be getting a new home area that I really want to focus on is this little cement patch here underneath the siding. It just really sticks out. You can see all the different colors there and it's a bit of an eyesore. So we will be painting that, which I'm very excited about. I've been meaning to do for quite some time, but this is finally it. And we are going to be getting some specific cement paint to cover that up. Over here in the corner, this is another area that we kind of just use for storage, but it really does take up a big chunk of the usable area for the patio. It was useful over here, but we actually are going to be relocating that storage shed to somewhere else. That way we can get the most out of our space here. I will also be replacing this rug. So I'm going to be keeping this one to use on another part of the patio, but for the underneath area, I did just want to get something a little bit different and new. These columns are also in need of a repaint. And I also will be doing a full deep clean of everything on this patio, including all of the stairs here, all of the cement and the siding. So we will be getting the power washer out. Since I am sticking to a pretty strict budget, I do want to save whatever I can and maybe repurpose it or reuse it in a different way. First thing we had to do was move this large storage shed. And once we started peeling it back from the wall, I saw just how dirty it was and it definitely needed to be cleaned up. So we decided to roll up the carpet, move everything out and just get the power washer out and start cleaning everything. We had this attachment for the siding, which was really helpful and it definitely made cleaning it a breeze. And you will see my lovely husband here helping out. I promise I did help with the cleaning whenever I wasn't filming, but this was the really satisfying part. I love seeing the cement get nice and clean with that power washer. We also gave the steps and the banister a good power washing as well. One of the areas I was able to save a little bit of money on were these string lights. So I actually already had these, but they were looking so dirty. I really didn't know if I was going to be able to get them clean. So I was going to repurchase the same set, but just get a new one, but it was $60 and that really wasn't in the budget. So I decided to just do my best, put in some elbow grease and clean them up. And they actually did come pretty clean. I scrubbed them all with a brush and then I ended up actually using a magic eraser to get some of that dirt off and it did come off pretty well. I do love the white string lights as opposed to the darker black ones, but the only bad thing is they do show every single bit of dust and dirt. After that was done, I gave a really good scrubbing and hosing to the siding. And then my husband went ahead and took care of all the gutters to make sure they were looking nice and clean. A few days before we started cleaning up the back patio, I actually did place an order on walmart.com just for some new furniture and a new rug. And it actually got delivered while we were cleaning. So here it is. It's kind of hard to see in the wrapper, but we will be taking it out later. 
I actually also got this fire pit delivered. So under the covered patio, which is where we're working today, you're not gonna really see the fire pit. It actually goes in a separate part of the patio, but we did end up getting rid of our old one. So I figured this was a wonderful time to replace it. And the one I found on the Walmart website was only $27. So I figured it was a pretty good deal. Even if it wasn't the best quality, I figured for the price, it would be good for how many times we would probably be using it this season. So here it is. I'm just taking it out of the wrapping here. We will be setting it up later, but I kind of just wanted to see what the quality looked like because it was on the cheaper end. And it honestly looks pretty okay. It's not the fanciest, but it actually does have a really nice look to it once it is all set up. And it also did come with a fire pit cover, which is great because we do leave ours exposed to the elements. So it is nice to be able to cover it up when we're not using it. And the assembly looked pretty simple. There were only a few parts to put together. You just basically have to put the legs on and then there is a ring to attach and then just put the handle on the cover here. I will say though, the bottom part, the main basin, did come a little bit dented, but I think that was just from the shipping since the shipping box arrived a little bit damaged, but it was nothing we couldn't get out, so it was ultimately okay. Here we are the next day, and today is painting day. Everything is fresh and clean, and we moved everything off the patio, and I did go to Home Depot just to pick up some paint that is meant specifically for cement. So we did end up taping it off with the blue tape because I'm not the most careful when I'm painting, and that did actually come in quite handy. And this is the color I went with. I wanted something that was going to blend into the siding, but maybe not match it entirely because the floor is gray, so I didn't want it to contrast too much against that. So I kind of was looking for something that was in between the two different colors. The first coat, it was still looking a bit patchy, as you can see here, which was making me pretty nervous. But luckily, after a second coat and then letting it dry completely, it was nice and even. And I think this looks so much better. I'm going to show you a before and after here, just so you can see what a big difference a little bit of paint can make. It always amazes me. Next, we gave the columns a fresh coat of paint because they were definitely needing it. I actually had this paint on hand from the last time we had painted the columns, so that did save me a little bit of money. And that fresh paint definitely went a long way in cleaning up the look of the columns. And then right after this, we ended up getting a thunderstorm. So I figured it was the perfect time to go on a little shopping trip. So I actually went over to Home Goods because now is really the best time to go shopping for all of that summertime decor. And you can always put it away for next year. Everything is on major discount because they're getting ready to bring out all of their new items for the fall. So you can definitely score some major deals. The only thing I ended up picking up today was this candle here but they did have a bunch of really nice potted plants and it did actually give me a couple ideas for some DIYs. Here is the candle that I brought home. It does have a citrus basil scent to it, but honestly to me, it just smells a lot more earthy, but really nice. And this one ended up being on clearance for $9, which I thought was a pretty good deal for a large outdoor candle like this. Let's go ahead and break down the budget so far. So I've spent $120 on a new outdoor rug, $27 on a fire pit, $40 for the outdoor paint, $9 for the home goods candle, and then $205 on the furniture set. It was actually $165, but then $40 shipping. I will leave all of those linked down below in the description box. Of my $500 budget, I have spent $401, so I only have $99 left for everything else. So now all of the painting and cleaning is done, so I figured it was time to start putting this patio back together. The first thing I did was put the string lights back up, but I decided to switch it up this time, and I ended up doing this zigzag pattern. The only issue was it wasn't super sturdy the way I attached it to the siding, and my husband was not really loving the look of it, so I did end up just putting them back how they were, just right across. Curious to know, which one do you prefer? Do you like the look of the zigzag lights or just one clean? line right across let me know down below in the comments so after i had the lights up i decided to unroll the rug and here is a look at it this one was a little bit darker than it looked online but for 120 dollars and for the size 
It was the best deal I could find and I do really like it. And here is the furniture all assembled. So in this set, you get the sofa, the two armchairs, and the coffee table. And this whole set was $165, but then it was an additional $40 to ship it. And I did order this one from Walmart. And I did spare you the footage of my husband and I putting it together. It was a little bit tedious, but it was pretty easy. I also found this plant stand on the Walmart website. I believe it was a rollback, so it was on sale. And here's how it looks on the cover, so you can have a better idea of how it's supposed to look. So it's just this little three planter stand, and I think it was just under $17, but really cute, and I thought it would fill out the corner nicely. And then I found these rope buckets at Target in the Target dollar spot. They were $5 each. And I've actually been looking for something really similar to this because I wanted to do some kind of decorative element on the siding behind the sofa, but I didn't want to hang anything too heavy from the wall. Amazon actually has these special hooks that are made specifically for siding when you want to hang something off of it. So they look like this. They come in a small pack. I believe it was six or eight in a pack. I'll leave them linked down below. And basically you just kind of hold it up and then curve it under and it hooks under your siding and then it locks in place. Now you can't hang anything too heavy from these, but small little decorative elements are awesome and it does not damage the siding at all, which is a huge plus. I couldn't find a link for this exact Target basket, but Amazon does have some very similar options, so I'll leave those linked down below in the description box. So my idea was basically to just put different faux greens into each one of the baskets. So I picked up three of these faux florals from Dollar Tree for $1.25 each. So in total, this wall display ended up costing about $19, $15 for the three baskets and then $1.25 for each of the faux florals. The way I was able to save a couple dollars was just to repurpose these old pillows I already had. So I've had these for quite a few years and I have washed them and this is the cleanest they're gonna get they're just really faded from years in the sun but I was able to save them by just ordering some outdoor pillow covers from Amazon I believe these were about six dollars a pillow cover they came in a pack of two so I ended up ordering two packs for a total of about $24 and they slip right over the pillow and they make it look so new and fresh Right after this, my husband and I ended up putting the new fire pit together. So here is a look at it. So this one was $27 and for the price, I do think it is a really good deal. Now it's not the fanciest at all. It's really basic, but it is really nice looking. And I think we'll definitely get a lot of use out of it, especially for the price. Definitely looking forward to those cool autumn nights where we can just relax around the fire pit and stay nice and cozy. This next item here was actually a DIY on this channel a few months ago. So I'll leave the video for this DIY linked down below in the description box. So I made this end table using all Dollar Tree products. So it's basically two of the Dollar Tree buckets glued together and spray painted. And then I did put a tray on top and then I covered the tray with this rope here just as a decorative element. And I thought that this would work really well in the patio. Now this can get wet. If it does get really wet, it will break the bond of the glue. But since I'm just gonna be using it under the covered patio, I thought it would work great because it really shouldn't be getting that weathered since it will be pretty covered. Now right here, you can see, this is where you glue the lid to the bucket. Now, if you want this to be a little bit sturdier, you can fill up this bucket here with some rocks or just something heavy before you glue your lid on top. That was actually a wonderful suggestion by a subscriber from that DIY video. But what I'm gonna do is actually a little bit different. So I'm not too worried about this falling over since it will be under the covered patio. What I'm going to be doing is using this as hidden storage. So my table that I have out here doesn't really have any storage as you can see. And I don't want the area to look too cluttered since it is on the smaller side. I just want it to have a really clean look. So I figure I can use this to hide things like coasters or even a lighter for my candle. These coasters actually are another Dollar Tree DIY on this channel. 
from about a year ago. I'll also leave that video linked down below in the description box. But that way, whenever I need a little handy coaster or even the remote for my candles, I can go ahead, take it out of here. And then when I'm all done with it, I can put it away and it's out of sight and it just makes everything look a little bit neater. Item I came across when I was getting everything ready for my patio was this planter here. And this was actually another Dollar Tree DIY. Again, I will leave that video linked down below just in case you want to see how to create this. It was super easy, but this was just a great example of how to shop your home. Just go around, see what you're not using, and see if you can repurpose it in a different way. So over here, these are two lanterns that I actually already had, but you can see they're looking quite weathered. I got these ones from QVC, but I didn't really want to get rid of them, even though they're not looking their best anymore. I figured let's just try and give them a little bit of TLC and see if we can salvage them. That way I can just reuse them instead of purchasing new. So the first thing I had to do was give them a really good scrub down. And then I wanted to paint this portion here. So originally these were all white, just like the top, but for some reason, I guess the sun bleaching them, it just took that paint right off and it kind of just yellowed it a lot. So I ended up picking up this paint here from Michaels and this is outdoor paint. So I figured I should be able to paint the sides. It says that it is waterproof as long as you let it dry beforehand. So fingers crossed this one works. To clean the lanterns, I first just decided to spray them with some Windex and then start to wipe them down, but I quickly discovered that that was not going to work. So I actually ended up just hosing them down. These are meant to be outdoors, but I don't really think you're supposed to get this much water into the inside of them, but there was really no other way for me to get them clean. So this is probably not recommended, but it is what I did to clean them up. So here are my lanterns after I had one of them painted. It was looking pretty decent and I went ahead and painted the second one and let them dry completely. So this was actually the last project, which means that it is time for the final reveal. So before I show you the end result, I just wanted to remind you of where we were starting off in the before. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with this patio. It served us really well and it was a really great space but we just wanted to give it a little bit of a refresh and here is the after this space just has such a different feel now i cannot wait to come out here in the morning with my cup of coffee and just relax the entire area is just so inviting and i am happy to announce that we stayed in budget so the grand total for everything was $465. It might be off by a few cents, but we were definitely under that $500 budget, which made me very happy and my husband very happy. But I think by just kind of thinking outside the box and shopping my home, being able to reuse and repurchase some items, and definitely looking for the best deals, I was able to kind of make a space that is really warm and inviting, but definitely doesn't break the bank. I'm gonna start using this space right away, but if I'm being honest, the thing I'm most excited about is getting to decorate this area for the fall and then for Halloween. It is just my favorite time of year and it's right around the corner and I definitely will be doing videos on that. So definitely stay tuned if you wanna check those out. And if you are new here, please do consider subscribing down below and be sure to turn on that notification bell so you're the first to find out when I release a new video. Thank you so much for watching. If you subscribe to my channel, you can just click on my picture right here and be sure to check out this video for some more DIY fun.